It's a big world out there with plenty of things to do and places to explore. But it's a world with a lot of big problems to solve, like pollution and global warming. It's time we all work together to solve them. So, where do we start? The first step is learning all that we can about the problems facing the Earth. And then figuring out ways to solve them. We call that exploring. And right now we're going to explore... Hybrid, hybrid cars. cars. What exactly is a hybrid car? The dictionary defines hybrid vehicles as any one that uses two or more distinct power sources to make it run. And while most of us think hybrid cars are a new idea, designed to increase gas mileage and reduce pollution, hybrids have actually been around as long as cars themselves. From the beginning, engineers worked to figure out the most efficient way to power automobiles. The very first self-propelled road vehicle was built in France by Nicolas Joseph Cuneau in 1769 and was powered by a steam engine. Then came the electric car, which was invented in Scotland by Robert Anderson sometime between 1832 and 1839. In 1885, the first gasoline-powered automobile appeared in Germany. It was simply a three-wheeled buggy to which Carl Frederick Benz attached an internal combustion engine. It wasn't until November 23, 1905 that an American engineer named H. Piper applied for the very first patent for a hybrid car, powered by both a gasoline engine and an electric motor. He claimed that the combination would allow his car to accelerate three times faster than any other. But it was an inventive European engineer named Ferdinand Porsche who built the first practical hybrid automobile. He devised a system in which a gasoline engine generated electric power and sent it to the electric motors, which were part of the car's wheel hubs. Later on, other hybrids used the gas engine to charge batteries, which then sent power to electric motors attached to the wheel axles. So, with all those choices, why did car makers settle on the gasoline or diesel-powered internal combustion engine? Simple. There was plenty of oil under the ground to make fuel, and the ICE, as it's called, was the simplest propulsion system to mass produce. Problem is, both gasoline and diesel oil are petroleum products made from fossil fuels, a non-renewable resource. Fossil fuel cannot be easily replaced, and it releases pollutants into the atmosphere when it is burned. Now, after more than a century, the demand for oil becomes so great that reliable supplies are difficult and expensive to find, and the atmosphere has become polluted. Since we use fossil fuels in almost everything we do, from going to school, shopping in the market, you'll notice the cost of just about everything keeps going up as well. Finding more eco-friendly, renewable ways to use energy has become increasingly important so, car companies are now looking at several different ways to power their automobiles. Hybrid technology has made a comeback. There are two different types of modern hybrid cars, the series hybrid and the parallel hybrid. They both use a combination of a gasoline engine and an electric motor. But in a series hybrid, the gasoline engine turns a generator that either charges batteries or sends power directly to an electric motor. The electric motor then drives the car. The gasoline engine never directly powers the vehicle. In a parallel hybrid, the gasoline engine not only charges the batteries, it can also turn the transmission at the same time. The transmission then turns the car's wheels. In a parallel hybrid, both the electric motor and the gas engine can provide propulsion power. Check under the hood. A hybrid looks a little different than other cars. Hi, I'm going to take you through a hybrid engine system here. So I'm just gonna open up the hood. Okay, here we go. Well, at first glance, what you're gonna see is this big cover that says hybrid, right? And underneath that is your Atkinson cycle engine. The Atkinson cycle is the cam timing, delays the intake valve closing, which actually puts the engine in what we call a sweet spot for fuel economy. And that combined with our hybrid transmission, they work in unison 
to form a, a hybrid powertrain. In there, there's a generator, and below that, there's a generator and a traction motor. So there are two, mo two electric motors. You'll note the high voltage wiring coming out the back, going into the power split. Now that's actually going to the high voltage battery in the back. So you've got one going to it and one coming back. So the one going actually takes the, the electricity generated by the generator to charge the battery. And then the other one is the return to drive the traction motor. Uh, what we have here is called a DC to DC converter and a DC to DC converter converts the high voltage electricity to 12 volts to run the rest of the vehicle system. And you'll note it's actually cooled because it generates a lot of heat. The same thing with the power split transmission. And that's basically the essence of a hybrid powertrain system. Gil Portaladin is an engineer who designs hybrid drivetrains for sport utility vehicles. He says the first thing you notice about a hybrid is how much quieter it is than a conventional car. Because you're in electric mode. So as I'm taking off, it's in electric mode, so you don't have the conventional noises of, uh, of the gasoline engine. The heart of a hybrid is its digital driveline, a sophisticated computer that calculates just when to allow the electric motor to run the car, and when to let the gasoline engine do all the work. In a hybrid, when you step on the gas pedal, you are actually telling the computer how fast you want to go. The computer then makes the decision about when to use the gas engine, when to go electric, or when to use a combination of the two. When you come to a stop, you're in electric mode. As I am now, the Escape Hybrid can drive in electric mode up to about 40 miles an hour. So you can cruise around, as we're doing here in this neighborhood, up to 40 miles an hour. And that's well within the speed limit. And so at that point in time, you're just using electricity. Second, when you come to a stop, the engine turns off. So you're not wasting fuel while you're idling an engine at a stoplight or in a traffic jam or anything of that, that nature. You can track exactly what's happening by looking at the power flow monitor on the dash, an instrument you won't find on any conventional car. So you see what's telling you here, it's I'm in electric mode, so it's saying I've got battery feeding the electric motor and it's driving the front wheel. So it's just feedback and now as I stepped on a gas pedal further, the engine kicked in so you have a combination of electric motor and gasoline engine working. And what you see is when I take my foot off the gas, it's, I'm decelerating, it's charging the battery. The engine shuts off, and I'm actually putting that energy from the front wheels back into the battery. So it lets you know, it gives you feedback on what you're doing and how the vehicle's operating so you can operate most efficiently. So it'll tell you when you're stepping on a brake, when you're regening and charging the battery, and it'll also tell you when you're driving in electric mode. So it kind of gives you some information that says, okay, I can drive more efficiently if I use this. This also tells you your instantaneous fuel economy. Again, feedback that says, okay, am I driving efficiently or am I not driving inefficiently? The whole purpose of a hybrid is to build a car that uses renewable, non-polluting electrical power whenever possible. Well, the idea was, uh, was, was to develop a uh, alternate propulsion system which used less gasoline. And in this case, you're using less gasoline and you're also improving the environment because every time your gasoline engine is off, you're not emitting CO2 into the atmosphere. The result? Automobiles that use less gas and are less polluting. It is very complicated and it's a melding of, of all these technologies together and to try and get it seamlessly, it's quite a bit of work. My team has uh, done a lot of work to, in order to get the engine operation and what I'm calling engine operation, the uh, engine start up and shut down modes to be seamless. And also when you're stepping on the brakes, not getting an unusual transition uh, or an unnatural feel that the customers were, were not used to. The disadvantage of hybrids? They're most effective only in urban city driving conditions. But the, the hybrid is ideal for an urban environment like we are now, stop and go traffic, city traffic. That's where you get the maximum benefit because you stop the engine and you run in electric mode. But when you're on a highway, you need the conventional engine to drive the powertrain. So it's ideally suited for city driving, ideally suited for traffic conditions, but on the highway, it uses a conventional engine just like any other vehicle.
In the future for hybrids, we keep on working on improvements on the powertrain. You know, going to smaller engines, uh, going to uh, lithium-ion batteries. We're all working on lithium-ion batteries, which a lithium-ion battery can, has more, more density or more energy per cell than uh, the nickel metal hydride. So that will allow us to downsize the battery. And so by reducing the weight, the vehicles will get lighter, more fuel efficient. So everything, it's all about efficiency. So, the next time you find yourself stopped at a traffic light or filling up at a gas station, think about how many ways you can use the Earth's natural resources more wisely and help make the world a better place in which to live. You know, there's still a lot more to learn about the world and what makes it go round. And it's never too late to explore. You might be surprised about all the things you can learn. Until next time, I'm Katrina. And I'm Christian. See ya. Out there exploring. <laughs>